Hello, I'm JW. Uh, another look at that uh, downlight which I took apart uh, a few days ago. And that was an integrated thing where the whole lot had to be replaced in the event of any kind of failure. And a lot of comments on that one. And uh, most of them were sort of, has the fuse at the beginning actually just failed there? And uh, the answer is no, it hasn't. But, uh, many people did put comments to that effect. And uh, as someone else also put, uh, the fact is if the fuse had failed, then it would be uh, more than likely due to something else on the board also failing, because obviously fuses don't just normally fail for no reason. But in the case of this one, the fuse was actually fine. And also checked uh, some of the other components on the board. The diodes were not damaged, the uh, capacitors were not the problem either. And the uh, MOSFET on the top, situated right next to the transformer, wasn't the problem either. So I can only uh, surmise from that that the defective item was that tiny little six-pin chip on the other side of the board. And uh, having uh, eventually got the markings off of that, it's a CL1100. Here's a link to the uh, data sheet, it's also in the uh, description as well. Now it's all in Chinese, but you can just use Google Translate to uh, get some kind of reasonable idea of what it's on about. And uh, basically it's a uh, constant current controller, and it uses that external MOSFET to drive the primary of the transformer. So not entirely surprising, pretty much exactly what you expect to find there. And uh, that presumably is the thing that's failed because, uh, say, all the other things seem to work or test just fine. And uh, there wasn't really a whole lot else on there other than, say, the uh, various capacitors, uh, resistors and the diodes. So it appears that the chip had failed, given that it was on the bottom of the board in the hottest part, then uh, probably not too surprising. Now, uh, some other comments uh, were about the red part on the top. And uh, here's the metal can here, and it's got that sort of red grating on the top there, which uh, is intended to seal in the event of a fire, or at least that's what's supposed to happen. And uh, we're going to find out whether this actually will go by uh, basically uh, taking it outside and putting a flame there and seeing uh, what actually happens to it. So uh, we'll uh, have a go at that shortly. And another very good comment was about the terminals on the end. And uh, here they are. I've actually just broken off of the board for reasons we'll see in a moment. But uh, essentially you've got six there, so it's uh, line neutral and earth, and then line neutral and earth again. So you've got the sort of power coming in, then you can have it going out to another device or another light fitting, most likely. But uh, as uh, the comment stated there, someone put a comment saying that the uh, traces on the board were actually rather thin. And uh, yes, they definitely are. Here's a sort of a closer look on the board there. And uh, you see that the uh, two traces that go uh, between the outer sets of pins on the terminals are definitely very, very thin indeed. So the question is how much current can these things take before they either melt or set on fire or whatever else? Now, most lighting circuits in the UK are going to be sort of 6 amps, or in some cases 10, but uh, certainly would expect those to be able to take at least 6 amps, given that you could have a circuit uh, loaded up to that level, and that would be a fairly regular and ordinary occurrence. Now, if the circuit only had those LEDs on it, then you'd have to have an awful lot of them to get up to a sort of 6 amp range, but again, as in the comment there, there's no guarantee that it's all going to be LEDs. You could have, say, a whole rack of halogen jobs a bit further down, so we'll uh, take this outside as well, and uh, put some current through that and basically just crank it up until either something uh, melts or smokes or does something else. So here we are outside and a fairly obvious setup here, just got the can there with the insert in the top and we're just going to heat it up with flame from that device on the right. So as we just start applying the flame here, see it starts to sort of char and blacken pretty much straight away. Well, again, this is what you'd expect to happen. And uh, again, this is supposed to be going when there's actually a fire in the room downstairs. And the point of this is supposed to stop the flames and whatever from passing through this hole, at least for a certain amount of time, sort of 30 minutes or however long the thing is rated for. Now, as we're heating this, you see there's various particles sort of just flying off from there. That's probably not typical in the case of an actual fire because it wouldn't have a sort of a directed jet of flame like this thing does. But to see it there, it's got expanding up uh, pretty well and sealing the hole over just as you would expect. Okay, this has been heating up there for approximately a minute, so I think we've seen all we need to see with that one. And you see it's sort of formed this sort of big black charred mess, which has fairly effectively sealed the hole in the top of the can. And you see it's actually fairly loose and uh, crumbly there, but nevertheless it's done the job it was intended to do. And I see it's still pretty hot and uh, smouldering away there. And that sort of mat of uh, 
mostly expanded material there is what's left of the top piece. Now for the circuit board I've uh, got the uh, setup we've got here and on the left there I've got the blue and brown wires which are the power supply. The brown one goes through the clamp meter there so you can see what current is going through and I've got a temperature monitor there on the right which just shows us the temperature of the track on the circuit board and various bits of black tape there just to hold things in position and those white bits are just expanded polystyrene again just to support things at the proper angle so we can actually see them more clearly. Here's a closer look at the actual circuit board and we're going to use the outer track on this one that will be the equivalent of the line conductor if it was in a real installation. So I've got the two wires there just going to the terminal block on the back and if you look at the bottom left there just next to the brown wire you can see the thermocouple bead I've just put through that hole so it's in contact with the trace on the board there and that will obviously show us the temperature that that reaches when we put the current through there. So here we have the actual setup. I've added a timer in the middle there which will just show us how long the power's been turned on for so we'll just set the timer going and turn on the power. Starting there at uh, about 5 degrees uh, centigrade, it's pretty cold and outside in January and uh, current is at the moment just sort of about 0.68 amps that's basically the starting arrangement for the equipment that we have. So uh, nothing particularly happening there and that's pretty much uh, what you'd expect and uh, well, we'll just turn up the current and uh, see what happens. So currently about 3 amps there and you uh, see the temperature is uh, slowly increasing, we're already up to sort of 8 or so there and as it slowly continues to increase. Now 3 amps uh, is actually quite a lot of lighting, uh, certainly that's sort of 240 volts it would represent in the region of sort of 700 watts of lighting, which in the case of these 7 watt LEDs would be around 100 of these light fittings. So this is a fairly unlikely scenario, although most circuits in the UK for lighting are typically rated up to about 6 amps, so it's certainly not impossible. But uh, just coming up to the minute mark there, and so still around the 3 amp mark, and temperatures has increased but only to 13, which of course is hardly uh, even barely warm, certainly not uh, causing any problem there. So we'll leave this running for uh, quite a while and see where the temperature gets to. So just coming up to 2 minutes and still at the 3 amps, and temperature say around 14 there, so about 10 degrees above ambient. So we'll turn the current up a bit now and see uh, what happens next. So now we're at about 4 amps, and the temperature is uh, say 16 there, slowly increasing, sort of 17, 18 and so on. So as before we'll leave this uh, running at the 4 amps and see where the temperature gets to. So the temperature seems to stabilise around that sort of 25 centigrade mark, and say about 4 amps or so, and we're about 3 minutes 23 seconds in. So we'll turn the current up uh, further. So. Uh, Let's go up to about 6 amps or so, which would be the sort of theoretical maximum for a fairly typical lighting circuit. So uh, current there just say about 6.5 amps actually, just over that. You can see the temperature now is increasing fairly rapidly, sort of 44, 45 kind of area. So again, we'll just leave this running and see where the temperature gets to. So at about 6.5 minutes now, the temperature's increased to a rather unacceptably hot 82 there and current about 6.4 amps. Now this is uh, certainly within the realms of an actual lighting circuit, so only just over the 6 amp mark, and 83 or so is pretty unacceptable because that's the sort of temperature where plastics and things are going to start melting or possibly being damaged. But uh, in any event it's not sort of set on fire or done anything else, so uh, let's turn up the current even further and see uh, what happens then. So now we're up to about uh, 8.4 amps or so, and the temperature is now rising rapidly, so it's uh, well over 110 centigrade now, so well past the boiling point of water, and continuing to increase uh, fairly rapidly. And if you look on the circuit board itself there, you see the trace is starting to discolour, sort of going a bit brown and uh, darker than it was before. So current's still around 8.3, and just coming up to the 8 minute mark, Temperatures just coming up to 150 centigrade. This is certainly within the range that things are going to become damaged. You see the circuit board trace is now fairly blackened in that thin section, and the temperature is still increasing. So we'll uh, just leave this going for whatever time it takes until the temperature stabilizes. So just coming up to 10 and a half minutes. Uh, temperature is now 195, which uh, of course is far too hot. Notice the uh, circuit board trace is now totally blackened. 
current still around the 8.1 or 8.2 amps kind of area but uh, let's just turn this up uh, even further as uh, we want to see how far it goes before the thing actually is destroyed so turn the current up there so we're now just uh, just under 9 amps and you see smoke is now coming off of the uh, circuit board trace temperature is increasing rapidly uh, now in sort of the 270 centigrade range and again the currents are holding reasonably steady around nine and a half you see the circuit board is now glowing red as the temperature passes 320 and there's now actually a burning spot in the middle and you notice the current has actually fallen down to only around one amp this will be due to the very high resistance of that uh, red glowing part so clearly this is uh, where the uh, thing is going to fail and if this happened in a real circuit then uh, stuff would not be working properly or at all by now so the temperature is now falling away because the thing's gone open circuit and it's basically just melted through the circuit board track so here's a look at the circuit board and see that trace now is completely blackened and destroyed now it's obviously just burnt through in the middle but uh, the wires going to the thing and the connector as well is completely undamaged uh, those are actually 0.75 square millimeter copper and most lighting circuits will be wired in actually one square millimetre, so even those wires are actually smaller than would normally be used. Here's the wires and the circuit board after just brushing away some of the charred material. And you'll see that the break point is pretty much in the centre. It's actually just melted through. The circuit board material is considerably charred there on both sides. And the uh, connector itself on the back is completely undamaged. There's no sign of any overheating or anything else. And that's not unexpected because say, this is obviously rated for far more than the 8 amps or so we put through it. But certainly the circuit board trace is the weak point. And bear in mind it's actually very thin. These wires here are 0.75. But uh, bear in mind those wires are pretty much circular. Whereas the PCB trace of course is just a very thin flat strip. So that piece in the top of the can did work as expected. So it expanded and uh, blocked up the hole while the flame was being applied to it and that's pretty, say, pretty much what you would expect to happen and those uh, very thin tracks uh, although they were fine up to an order of sort of three amps or so once you got into the four plus range then they were getting extremely hot and uh, certainly in the six plus range they were getting far too hot and charring the board and of course eventually melting through now it's very unlikely that you're going to have that kind of current in a real situation because that would imply you've got say a hundred of those 7 watt lamps in a single room all switched together which of course is uh, rather unlikely however you could have things like uh, say some LEDs and some other types of light in the same room from the same switch and those could of course be uh, halogens or all kinds of other things and of course there are other things like ceiling fans whatever which may be attached as well but uh, certainly up to sort of 3 or 4 amps then not a particular problem and another thing to consider there is what would happen if there was a short circuit at the end of a circuit which contained several of those because there you're going to have the fault current actually passing through those little tiny circuit board tracks. Now normally the fuse or circuit breaker will disconnect before the wiring is damaged and that's the whole point of having a circuit breaker or fuse so that that will be opening the circuit before the wires have had a chance to heat up. But in the case of those very thin tracks, there's a very good possibility that they could be uh, heated up and vaporised before any fuse or circuit breaker actually tripped. Just bearing in mind, uh, we saw it got to a very high temperature, even at sort of 4 or 5 amps there, so it doesn't really take much current to get it to a fairly high temperature. Now, we can't unfortunately test that because I've already destroyed that particular one, but uh, certainly those very thin tracks are not likely to withstand a short circuit fault, certainly if it was a uh, thing of any kind of magnitude. But in any case, until next time, thanks for watching.